we put a big idea, a multifaceted idea in front of you here on, on Wabas, Nebraska. And, and if you're an economic developer, and of course this show was designed to serve the economic development community, if you're a mayor, if you're a business leader, I want to encourage you to, to really think carefully now and, and reflect upon your own experience and the future uh, of your organization. Now, remember the old um, axiom of, uh, of the frog that somebody drops in water, right? A pail of water or something and turns on the fire, turns on the heat. And the main thing that people talk about with this metaphor is that the frog gets cooked. It gets cooked and dies, of course, because the frog doesn't realize that the heat is going up. It's, it's a slow process, see? So finally, it's too late and, and, and the frog dies, right? It's a very sad thing in a way, but I guess what I'm trying to say is here, the notion that change creeps up on you slowly, 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 so slowly you don't even know what's happening around you, and then you just kind of succumb to it and, and your experience is, is over, theoretically or literally, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, that's uh, not true. <laughs> that's not true. A gentleman named Adam Grant, who's uh, quite a guy, he was a friend of the gentleman that started Facebook way back at Harvard years ago, and Adam Grant is a, is a prolific writer and so on, but he said that he went to a laboratory hired a bunch of scientists to do exactly this, exactly this, whole deal with, with the frog in a container of water. And they were all around looking at him and they were controlling the temperature precisely and the fire and the flame and all that. So in the first case, when you drop, if, if, you have the, if the water's boiling and you drop a, fl- a, a frog in that boiling water, the frog will die almost immediately. No surprise there. All right. And, and that's that's the beginning and the end of that story. But if you have some water and you, and you put a frog in there, you turn on the water. Of course, it begins to warm up. It begins to warm up. But here's the deal. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. At a certain point, the frog climbs out of the container. They've made that possible to do. The frog couldn't withstand or didn't want to withstand the heat in the water and left, left it behind, just like you and I would do <laughs> in a hot tub, for instance, that's turned on too hot over time. So this is very interesting. And the key point about this whole metaphor is this, and I'm probably jumping around a little bit on it, but we, once we make up our mind about something, and I'm going to say this, I don't want to offend anybody, but here in Nebraska, this is particularly true. There are probably other places where it's particularly true, but here in Nebraska, when we make up our minds about something, we don't really even want to consider, we don't want to consider changing our minds or thinking about it in some other way. We're set. This is what we believe. This is what we stand for. Beginning, middle, and end, that's how it goes. And so, this is a particularly troublesome mindset, and, it, and it's all over, really. It's, it's all over. You can't name any one particular group. But probably the younger people would be less inclined to do this because they're kind of, by their very nature, opening up to life as they, as they emerge into middle age. But what, what we need here in Omaha, and I'm not here to preach today, but... Uh, we, 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 we need to rethink and challenge our thoughts and let other people come in and challenge our assumptions. In fact, it's really interesting. This exercise say, what do you believe in? Right? I actually had a lady sit in front of me at, at a Starbucks once and she had her hands rolled up. She had her, her legal pad out with her pen and she said, okay, Lynn, here we go. Share with me what you believe. I'm ready. And sure enough, for over half an hour, I kept spouting out to her what I, what I believed or what I thought I believed, number one, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. It's a very interesting exercise, but the point now, as Nebraska continues to struggle with population, Nebraska continues to lose not just young professionals or college grads, now we're losing hourly workers. We're losing workers uh, as well as uh, 
you know, what I would call a young professionals. So the, the situation is becoming more and more urgent. And yet when you talk to people around the state, uh, mayors and economic developers would be an example, but, but also business owners, chamber people, and so on. And they will tell you, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing right here in our community. Uh, we got some kudos for fixing up this house and creating this and childcare. We worked, did some things there and whatever, you know, whatever it is, right? They're all busy. They're all doing constructive things. So we, we now this is them speaking to me again. We can't really, you know, buy into and get deeply involved in this high level, urgent, high level dialogue about how are we going to keep people here and how are we going to keep companies here and if we don't have the right kind of people here the right kind of companies are not going to come either and this is all complexified by the fact that of course an individual can work remotely and could be working for somebody in florida or california or whatever so now it's difficult to know if you're an economic developer who are we going after are we going after individuals if so, we need a marketing campaign that's aggressive, man. Or are we looking for businesses and, or, and individuals individually? Or uh, what about the fact that they, these young folks may not like what our streets look like? They may not like our house. They may not like our name. Uh, what do we do about all this, see? And meanwhile, it continues and continue. And there's two kinds of people, by the way. There's people who don't actually believe that we can do anything. Well, we don't have mountains, we don't have rivers and lakes too much, uh, other than Lake McConaughey and a couple other smaller ones. So, you know, we're just never going to get them, so we should quit fussing about it, just do the best we can and until central and western Nebraska literally don't exist anymore. Anymore. I talked to a gentleman who is a owner of a lumber yard in Crete. Very bright man, he's been running his business now, I think he said 30 years, something like that. And he said, I will tell you this, Lynn, I can't be quantitative about it or precise, but I can tell you this, every year, going back every single year for years and years, he said the number of products that we are selling, lumber products and so on, gets less. Our customers seem to like dry up, go away, I don't know, but they, they keep getting smaller and smaller. It's not a positive scenario. And so that's why we have to think differently. We have to think differently. We have to, we have to ask ourselves questions like, exactly who <laughs> do we want to come into the state of Nebraska? Uh, do we want uh, fast-selling insurance financial service guys that are all about money? Do we want to go back to the heartlanders and traditionalists and so on that haven't left Fairbury and they just, they're staying there and they're rural and they'll do whatever they can do? Or do we want what we call urban naturals, they used to be called cultural creatives. I want to say that word again, back in 2002, they were huge. Just everyone was excited about learning more about cultural creatives. As a result of that, we have Silicon Prairie, right? With Dusty and Jeff right here in Omaha, Nebraska. As a result of that breakthrough in information. So we said, okay, look, I want to learn about this, huh? And they learned about cultural creatives and they did something about them, and they created something significant and important, entrepreneurial, well-developed. So here we are now, 25 years later, maybe a little bit more, right? And we're trying to figure out the same thing, trying to figure out what can we do. And of course, the Riverfront Project in Omaha is a great thing, but it's not enough. It's not enough. And there's a real issue about downtown. Maybe people are leaving all these beautiful buildings, Mutual of Omaha and all that, leaving, working out of their office, working out of their kitchen, whatever they're doing. So we're at a critical moment in Nebraska. <coughs> and that means that people that are thinking about it but don't get asked to speak. The, 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 they, they have all the ideas, they have the research, they have data, but you know, hey, huh? <laughs> nobody's knocking on my door, nobody's inviting me to speak and share with them what we've worked hard over time. I'm, oh my goodness, so many people have so many wonderful, helpful ideas. They're not being heard. They're not on the right committees. They're not in front of the right people to give, I don't know, workshops, forums, whatever it is, I don't know. But there is got to be an openness, say, tell us what you think. 
What have you learned? What did they tell you? What could we do with that information? How do we fuse it with other previous information? Can we do this? Are we going to get out of this? What's going to happen in the future right here in the state of Nebraska? Well, I'm Lynn Hinderocker with Wild Biz Nebraska, and I appreciate you listening carefully to what I'm saying right here and the importance of thinking openly and, and, and moving forward after hearing new ideas, new strains of thought, new concepts, new objectives, new goals. I'm Lynn Hinderocker with Wild Biz Nebraska. This has been a terrific show. Primarily because you're staying right there watching the whole show. You're learning. You're nodding your heads. I know you are. I'll see you next time right here at Wild Biz Nebraska. Have a good night.